we need to talk about what happened to Star Wars. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm talking about just the current state of Star Wars and there will be Ahsoka spoilers in here. So if you have not seen Ahsoka episodes 1 through 8, spoiler warning. Um, this is sort of functioning as a spoiler review for that, but more so just a rant on the current state of Star Wars and, and the condition of the fandom and all that stuff. But before I get into this thing, hit that like button and comment down below your thoughts on Ahsoka, your thoughts on Star Wars media nowadays. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. It mean a lot. And check out the Unusual Couple podcast link down below for weekly podcast episodes. Now, I'll let you know up front, there will be minimal editing in this video. It is a rant of sorts. I kind of equate it to when I just let the camera roll for my Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny spoiler review because sometimes you just got to sit here and talk it out. So... Last night, uh, the Ahsoka Season 1, or just series, I should say, finale, because no Season 2 is confirmed, well, the finale aired. And to me, it didn't really do much. It didn't do much for me. And the reason is, the show's structure started to fail itself as you got past, I'd say, the fifth episode. And it was a realization that I came to late. It was actually before the episode started last night. I was like, okay... This isn't going to stick the landing, probably. And it ended up being just fine. Like, the finale was serviceable, but we kind of ended exactly where we began. And again, spoiler warning, um, where a lot of this show, Ahsoka was with Sabine, and she wanted to be, you know, Sabine's master, all this stuff. And then we end up where Sabine goes with um, Balin and the others to go and try and rescue Thrawn. And then the show ends with Thrawn on, you know, his Star Destroyer or whatever, headed back to the normal universe that Star Wars takes place in because he was in some other universe. Um, and then you've got Ezra now back with Hera. Ezra's home, right? Um, but no, that's not the case because Sabine and Ahsoka have seemingly switched places with him. So we're back to square one. We're back to square one um, in terms of breaking down the plot of this show, which became we got to find Ezra, we got to bring him home, and we have to stop Thrawn. Thrawn was not stopped. Sabine and Ahsoka are now where Ezra was. And there's no urgency, no urgency to get back. They're like, we're, we're where we need to be. There's just no urgency. And it's bizarre that it kind of just ended like that. And then they shoehorned in Anakin Skywalker at the end, and people are just going crazy online anytime we see Anakin. Like, it's not special anymore. I love Anakin Skywalker. He's a great Star Wars character. Obviously, he becomes Darth Vader. Um, but we saw him in Obi-Wan. We saw him multiple times throughout Ahsoka, and every time Hayden Christensen shows up as this character, it's not like we need to get the fireworks out and be like, oh my god, this is groundbreaking stuff. Um, it was, it reminded me a lot of when they just threw Qui-Gon Jinn in at the end of Obi-Wan. <laughs> That's how it felt with the end here. It was like, oh, he's watching over Ahsoka. It's like, it's a sweet moment, sure, um, but how necessary was it? I don't know. It felt very fan y and that's something I want to get into right now is I enjoyed a lot of Ahsoka. Don't get me wrong, seeing Clone Wars live-action scenes was a dream come true for my little eight- to nine-year-old self when I watched Clone Wars. If, I, if someone had told me, you're going to see this in live-action years from now, I'd be like, hell yeah bring it on. Um, so I'm not complaining about that. It, this show gave us a lot of cool things as a fan of Star Wars, the Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, and just Star Wars in general. It was some really good storytelling at times. Um, but ultimately, it, it kind of came off as just a fan service he products me by the end with no real direction. Um, I, I kind of equate it to a Star Wars hangout show. Like, if you've seen the movie Dazed and Confused, it's just a bunch of high schoolers hanging out on their first day of summer, and it's fun. You enjoy the vibes. That's kind of how I equate it to Ahsoka. Like, I enjoy the vibes of Ahsoka, for sure, but when I actually dive into the material, it didn't do much for me. It didn't really do much at all, actually. Um, Ezra doesn't show up until episode six, and then he gets home on his own. What is the difference, and hear me out for real, what is the difference if, if say, this show's plot never existed, right? Thrawn was eventually going to find his way back anyway. Ahsoka and Sabine had no really significance in the planning and plotting of Thrawn's return, okay? So what if Ezra just found his way onto that Star Destroyer and they and, and ended up back in the normal universe like they do at the end of the show? Ahsoka and Sabine's meaning and purpose in the show? Non-existent. They're not really needed at the end of the day. And so this show had a lot of fun vibes. Don't get me wrong. I like the character Balin, played by Ray Stevenson, rest in peace. He, he was a scene stealer for me kind of fell off in the last few episodes. We didn't really see him much. So uh, I think the show lost its footing. At a certain point, it was going really well for me, like episode four. Episode five was dedicated to Anakin, which on paper was cool as a Star Wars fan. I ate it up. Um, but that is the epitome of fan service. There's no denying that. It is the epitome of fan service. And if you loved it, trust me, I liked it a lot. More power to you. I enjoyed it. It, it, it satisfied my, you know, 
uh, childhood desires in a way of wanting to see Anakin in live action as much as possible. But when I actually break it down in the context of Star Wars, it's not that important uh, to the overall sort of mythology. Um, it just was there to be like, hey, fans, here's Anakin yet again. Hey, fans, here's this reference yet again. It's like, let's have an actual contained story in Star Wars. And that's where I praise Andor. It's not trying to do these fan service things. I think I was blinded to this at first, but it's become almost a, a trend for Star Wars. This is kind of transitioning out of the Ahsoka talk into the bigger picture talk, which I wanted to kind of get off my chest today, is that a lot of Star Wars projects lately feel like they're not even trying for the story. They're just trying to please fans because of the sequel trilogy. Look at The Mandalorian. And, you know, in the moment, I love that Luke returned. I love we got Boba Fett. Those are fan servicey things. Um, they're not necessary. And this is another conversation to be had where Star Wars is so restricted by the timeline. Um... I mean, they reference Princess Leia in an episode of Ahsoka. Obviously, rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. She's not going to show up unless they do some sort of AI CGI recreation of her, which would be sort of immoral in a way. Whole another topic for another time there. But regardless, the actual sort of timeline of Star Wars has restricted the content for years now, and this is nothing new. I mean, you look at Ahsoka, it does the same thing, and that's just an issue I have. Even The Mandalorian, I think I was blinded at first because I wanted to love the show so much, especially like season three. Um, and look, I did love seasons one and two of The Mandalorian. Season three, I think, was the drop in quality. Um, but that's why I praise Andor. It's its own original thing. And now that I've sort of spewed, said my piece about Ahsoka and, and all the shows, we to talk about the fact that Star Wars has fully shifted from movies to TV and why. It makes no sense to me. You had, you know, each Star Wars film making damn near a billion dollars at one point in time, and now it's seemingly shifted to Disney Plus series that usually don't end up fully satisfying fans by the end. They feel incomplete, um, they're never really guaranteed season twos, and a lot of times, like I said, they feel fan servicey, damn near cash grabby, or should I say clickbaity, because it's not really about the money on Disney Plus, you don't you know, it technically is, but it's more about the views for them, right? Um, so when I look at it at the end of the day, why has Star Wars shifted from movies? I think it's because the sequel trilogy sort of derailed that. They did Solo, they did Rogue One. Rogue One obviously was a hit. Solo failed at the box office. Another topic for another time. But when you look at it, they said, okay, after the sequel trilogy, let's just launch Disney Plus and put all our efforts into Star Wars content being on Disney Plus. They started strong with The Mandalorian. They had The Clone Wars Season 7, which was a huge hit. Then you get into the Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan, and that's where it starts to get almost in desperation mode for me. Um, it feels like at a point in time there was a clear sense of direction. We're going to do The Mandalorian for five seasons. It's going to be this really cool thing. Mando's going to end up interacting with Luke and Boba Fett and all these characters we love, but he's also going to have his own contained story with Grogu. And then at the end of season two, it was like, okay, Grogu's gone his separate way. We're going to move on from that. And then you had the Book of Boba Fett sort of retcon or go back on everything that was set up at the end of Mando Season 2 so that when M Mando Season 3 rolled around, it was all fine and dandy. Grogu's back with Mando. Right now, I guess my big thing is all these Star Wars shows are coming out. No movies are coming out. But all these Star Wars shows are coming out, and they're not really connected, which is fine. Which is fine. We don't need them to be. But a lot of them are now trying to force a connection. You had the through line of that rebel pilot character or f for whatever. Resistance, New Republic, whatever you want to call them. The new character uh, who is in Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and Ahsoka, who's kind of this connective tissue. He's like the damn news reporter in the Sony Marvel films. You know what I'm talking about? That dude who just pops up and is like, oh, it's the same universe, or is it? Um, well, this is obviously a lot more on the nose because it is in the same universe. It's Star Wars. But uh, it's just, it's crazy to me that Disney Plus... And I didn't realize it at first, but here's what's happening. They started The Mandalorian, they started Boba Fett, they started, you know, Ahsoka, and now they're going to try and make them all converge in this Mandoverse movie. So they're using TV shows to build up to a movie. And that business model is going to fail, and I'll tell you why. Not everyone in the world has Disney+. Plus. A lot of people do not have Disney+, Plus and do not watch these Disney Plus Star Wars shows. So if you make a movie, theatrically released, and it's directed by Dave Filoni, and it is the culmination of events from a Disney Plus series in a theatrically released movie, the general audiences are going to be damn, damn confused. Damn confused. Because that this movie, the plot of it, would require your knowledge of multiple seasons of television on a streaming service that you have to pay a monthly fee for. So that baffles me, that that's sort of the direction Star Wars is headed. If you look at the movie lineup right now, it's like, oh, we're going to have this director come in, and this director come in, and this director come in, and you see guys come and go constantly, from writer to director duos. It's like, no one wants to be working on Star Wars projects right now, and I can't blame them. It's because there's really no clear sense of direction with the actual universe. And that 
is because they are trying to force everything into the Skywalker Saga timeline, which is not needed. This is a galaxy far, far away. As shown in Ahsoka, it's expansive, and you can literally go to other galaxies or universes. So why the hell don't we just take the Star Wars name, put it to a new trilogy of films with new characters unrelated to the Skywalker Saga? It baffles me. It blows my mind. Even the MCU, which I've critiqued for being repetitive and, you know, superhero fatigue, it switches it up because not everything is tied to, like, one specific timeline in a way. You know what I mean? There's Eternals, there's Ant-Man. Yeah, they're in the same universe, but they're in their own section of it, and they're unbothered by all these other characters for the majority of their respective run times or whatever. Obviously, you got Falcon showing up in, in you know, Ant-Man, but it's not that big of an issue. And Star Wars has failed miserably at realizing they can... They can leave the Skywalker Saga timeline because now they're digging themselves a hole. They're putting themselves in a corner, right? Um, Ahsoka is after Return of the Jedi. So is the Mandalorian. So they're building up to all these events with Thrawn that are taking place before the sequel trilogy, about, I'd say, 25, 30 years before. And that is just going to make issues arise because truly in the sequel trilogy, and I know that it's hard to sort of talk about this because... The sequel trilogy came out before any of these Disney Plus things were really playing, you know what I mean? So, if we're looking at it as an actual, realistic, canonical universe, the events that are happening, that they're building up to with Thrawn, would most likely have impacted the events of the sequel trilogy. Because Thrawn's coming back and seemingly is going to be this return of the Empire for a bit, that would be referenced in the sequel trilogy. That would have huge implications on the galaxy. And where's Luke? Where's Han? Where's Leia? They're all around right now. They're all around right now. So it's just frustrating. Um, I I think my big takeaway here, and this was kind of my vent session. I don't even know what this video is going to be called. And if you made it to the end, congrats. This has been all over the place. It's been an Ahsoka spoiler review. It's been my rant on Star Wars. This is basically therapy for me. (laughs) Okay, so thank you for tuning in regardless. Hit the like button, I guess. But um, Ahsoka had a good thing going. And then it tried to do too much at the end, you know, with uh, with Morgan becoming like the Night Sister, and then Thrawn being like, oh, let's go back. And then Ezra's there and he's reunited with Hera. Like a lot of things just happened. And it, it felt like the show lacked urgency in the last three or four episodes. Like, once Ezra's found, he's like, oh, hey, took you long enough. And they're just, like, fighting with these turtles. And it's like, what is happening? What is happening? You guys had a really good thing going early on in the show. And um, in typical Disney Plus fashion, it ended up sort of just fizzling out at the end. Um, now, no season two is greenlit. And I know people will say, well, dude, it's setting up season two. Well, it never felt like structurally we reached a, a, a point of finality or resolution with a season one. In fact, what was the main objective of season one? Um, seriously, I'm asking. Uh, because Sabine doesn't even... I mean, Sabine ends up on the ship to go find Thrawn. It's like, oh, Thrawn is all the way out there. So the villains, they want to go find Thrawn and bring him back. But what are the heroes? What's their point? Who really knows? Um, there's a whole... I, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. There's great concepts, great moments. Um, but as an overall show, there, there was so much more potential and, and it kind of let me down. And that speaks to just the greater state of Star Wars trying so desperately to please the fans right now and making everything connect and this... Uh, 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 it's just not needed. It's not needed. And Andor is proof of that. I will I will continue to sing my praises for Andor. It's technically filling in the gaps before Rogue One and, and making us care more about Cassian, um, but it's effective, and it doesn't feel like that's its entire objective, to make you care about this guy for Rogue One. It's just telling a story about a dude joining the Rebellion, fighting against the Empire. That's it. It's very simple. And, and the template's there. The template's there for Star Wars. The Mandalorian Season 1 was that template, honestly. All you have to do is just take the Star Wars name, Put it to a trilogy of movies and make a story. It can be in another universe. It can be in another... You can specify in an open crawl, this isn't even the galaxy. You can have someone walk out and say, hey guys, this is completely new. It is a Star Wars project, and it's in this universe that's eons away from the actual Skywalker Saga timeline. Enjoy. That's all you have to do. And maybe one day we'll reach that point. But right now, I'm just kind of fed up with it. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with a lot of things. I'm fed up with the lack of of Star Wars being put to film. Because if you just made a movie called Obi-Wan Kenobi, it would have probably made a billion dollars minimum. But they made it a TV show, and they forced all these things into it. Frustrating. Ahsoka. Probably not going to have as big of a draw at the movie, so I get why it was a show. But even then, it's Star Wars Rebels 2.0. Why don't you just animate it and call it, here's Star Wars Rebels making a return. You're pleasing those fans, and... I don't know who this was really for at the in the end of the day. Like, I love Rebels, I love Clone Wars, but why didn't you just stick with that? I don't know. I just have a lot of questions, and it's weird to me. And Star Wars is something I grew up loving, and I still really like. Um, 
but it's just gotten so complicated over the years. It's gotten really complicated, and there's no denying that. So at the end of the day, Ahsoka was fine. I thought it had great moments. I was loving it week to week, and then the finale was kind of like, what was the point of it all? Who really knows? We kind of ended where we began, and there's no season two greenlit, so we're all just kind of chilling, I guess. I don't really know. Um, And they need to get back to the movies. They need to get back to Star Wars movies badly. Trilogies. Unrelated to the Skywalker saga. The template's there. The ball's in Star Wars court. And um, I I know no one's ever going to be pleased. This is just me talking, honestly. So uh, this was just my honest to God, honest thoughts on Star Wars as someone who's grown up watching the original trilogy, loved the Clone Wars, loves Star Wars, the idea. A uh, <laughs> little Balin reference there, but I miss the idea. Anyway, I, uh, yeah, I kind of feel mixed on Star Wars right now, and who knows what the future holds. I'm ready for Andor Season 2. Um, is there another season of Mandalorian? What is this Mandoverse movie? Who even knows? Who knows? We'll see. I just think there's serious management issues right now, and um, it's just hectic. Talking about it's stressful, and talking about it's irritating. I'll probably do a TV show ranking. Other than that, I don't talk Star Wars much for a reason. A lot of content creators don't for a reason. And, um, yeah, it's kind of exhausting. In fact, I'm tired right now talking. But, anyway, thank you all for watching this rant video. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. Check out the usual couple podcasts linked down below for weekly podcast episodes. We had a fun one that got kind of heated that dropped today, so check that out. But thank you guys, as always, for watching, and may the Force be with you always.